Okay, guys, so today is modcast, uh, mole vodcast number four, not modcast, mole vodcast four, uh, talking about multi step mole conversions. And so, this is the, the meat, if you will, of a lot of what we do for the next several weeks, being able to go multiple steps into these. So, um, very important, pay attention, take some notes, try some, try these practice problems, and um, we will get started right now. Okay, so uh, multi step mole problems are problems where you have either grams, liters, number of particles, and you want to go to something that's not the mole. Um, to do that, you go through the mole, however. And so um, if you take note of what you've learned so far is that you have learned, oops, sorry, you have learned that one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. One mole is equal to Avogadro's number. One mole is equal to the molar mass of something. So, for example, if it were carbon, it would be 12.011 grams here. And one mole is equal to the molar uh, volume, which is 22.4 liters of a gas at STP. Well, the key thing here is that all of these are equal to a mole. And so, if you know particles and you want to know mass, then you can run a two-step problem from particles to the mole, and then you go from the mole to the mass. So it's a two-step problem. Or you can go from gas to the mole and then to, to the mass, or you can go from particles to the mole to the gas volume. And so that's what we're doing today, is we're just going to be running through the mole from something here on the right side to something else on the right side. But to get here, we've got to kind of go through the mole. So we do these two steps uh, to do so. So. Um, so if you have, for example, liters of oxygen, and you want to know how much it weighs, that would be mass, then you would perform the multi-step problem as follows. You would start out with liter, liters of oxygen, and you would convert that by doing your uh, a single-step problem into the mole, and then you go from the mole, and you convert that by a single-step problem into the grams. And if you just put those back-to-back, -back, then we have a multi-step problem where we go from liters to moles to grams, and we get our answer. Okay? So let's do example one. I have three examples for you today. Example one, how much would 13.9 liters of oxygen gas weigh? And so we would go from liters to moles. The key step here is that we're always going to go to the mole. Um, in ancient days, all roads led to Rome. Um, in moles and stoichiometry, all roads lead to the mole. We go through the mole. Um, and so we go from liters to moles, and then we'll go to grams. So let's start out with what we have. We have 13.9 liters, and so let's begin with that. 13.9 liters of oxygen. Um, we're going to stick that over 1. We don't have to, though, but we are going to multiply by our, uh, our fraction bar here. And we are going to convert from liters to moles. And so that conversion between liters and moles is there are 22.4 liters in one mole, right? And so we have liters on top here, so we'll put liters on bottom. So we'll put the 22.4 liters of oxygen on bottom, and that's equal to one mole of oxygen. Now if we stopped now, we'd have a single step problem, and our answer would be in the moles, because the liters of oxygen cancel the liters of oxygen. We don't want to stop now, though. We want to continue, so we'll just do another multiplication in a fraction bar, and we're going to continue by converting moles into grams, and the conversion there is we know that one mole is equal to the molar mass. So we need the molar mass of oxygen, so that's two oxygens times 15.999, and two times 15.999 gives you 31.9. Nine, eight. Now we have moles on top, so we'll put the mole on bottom. And again, it's one mole here. One mole is equal to 31.998 grams of oxygen. Now that's as far as we want to go, so we'll hit an equals there. Um, you can see that the mole of oxygen would cancel the molar of oxygen here. And then you just do your math, 13.9. Uh, we'll divide by the 22.4 since it's in the denominator. We'll multiply by the 31.998 since it's in the numerator. You multiply those out and you get 19.9 grams of oxygen. We'll go three significant digits since our original number over here 
had three significant digits. Okay, so that's example one. Example two, how many molecules of CO2 are in 35.43 grams of CO2? So we have grams. That's what we have. We have grams, and we want to go to molecules. So we will start out with grams of CO2. We're going to convert that into the mole, because then every, the mole is common to all of them. And then we'll convert our moles into the molecules. Okay, so, uh, by the way, I abbreviate molecule as M-O-L-E-C to differentiate it from the mole um, in, in these kind of problems. So that's my abbreviation for molecule. So let's begin. We have 35.43 grams of CO2. Um, we're going to need to stick that over 1. Multiply. We're going to go from grams to moles. Our conversion there is the molar mass. Molar mass equals one mole, right? So we need the molar mass of this substance right there, CO2. Uh, I'll put it down here. Carbon is 12.011 grams. Uh, we have two oxygens. And two oxygens is 31.998. You add up these two together and you get 44.009 as our molar mass. So we have grams on top, so we're going to put the grams on bottom, so we'll put the molar mass on the bottom, 44.009 grams CO2, and that is equivalent to one mole of CO2. Again, if we stopped here, it's a single step problem, we would have moles as our answer because we have now canceled grams with grams. We don't want to stop here, though. We want to continue on to molecules. So we're going to multiply by one more step. The conversion to moles and molecules, you should know that. That's one mole is equal to how many molecules? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And so we have moles on top here, so we'll put the mole on bottom. One mole of CO2, and we'll put what it's equal to, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of CO2. Okay, and once again the mole of CO2 here has canceled the mole of CO2 there. And so we have grams canceling grams, moles canceling moles, we're left with molecules of CO2 which is what we were looking for. Run this through your calculator, it'll be 35.43, uh, we'll divide by the 44.09 since it's a denominator, we'll multiply the, by the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and we're, we're going to get 4.846 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of CO2. I've got four significant digits here because we started with the 35.43, which has four significant digits. All right, moving on, last example. How much space or volume would 2.84 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of hydrogen gas occupy? All right, so here's what you've seen two examples. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to pause the video. I want you to try to work this one on your own and then restart the video and go along with me and see if you get it. So go ahead and pause the video now. All right, I'm going to continue working, and so um, we'll start with what we know. Well, actually, let's just put down what we're going to go to. We have molecules, and we want to work towards volume. So we're going to start with molecules, or particles, and then we will convert that to the mole. And then we'll convert the moles to space, which is volume. That's going to be the molar volume, so liters of H2. So two Point, start with what you know. We know we have 2.84 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of H2. We're going to stick that over 1. Multiply that. Now our conversion from particles to moles is we know that 1 mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, right? So we'll put 1 mole, actually we're going to put 1 mole on top, not on bottom here. So one mole of H2, and that is 
O2 times 10 to the 23rd. Now if you stop now, again, molecule cancels molecule. This should be molecules. I'm bad there, left off the units. Molecules of H2 there, that would cancel. And you'd have moles right now, that would be your unit if you stopped now. We don't want to have moles, so we're going to continue on. We're going to go from moles to liters, and again, it's one mole. Notice this is always one mole in this middle step here, and that's 22.4 liters. So we're going to put the one mole of H2 on the bottom, and we're going to put the 22.4 liters of H2 on the top, and then those will cancel out the mole of H2, and the mole of H2 will cancel out. Have your equal sign here. 2.84 times 10 to the 23, since this is on bottom, we'll divide it by the 6.02 times 10 to the 23. We'll multiply by the 22.4, and you are going to get 10.6 liters of H2. Okay, and so that is the answer to that one. So, a couple of things. Number one, in using the exponents, remember I have taught you to use the second E button, this, so you get the E on the TI calculators. If you have the Casios, it's the EXP button to put in your, your power of 10 here. If you do this wrong, um, you're going to get some crazy number that's going to be like 10 to the 45. Okay, that, remember, remember how big the mole is times 10 to the 23 is. That's 23 zeros. How crazy would 45 zeros be? Well, that's ridiculous. So if you ever get a 10 to the 45 answer or a 10 to the negative 45 answer, or 44, 46, or 47, something up like that, that you did something wrong in your calculator, you need to redo that and make sure that you're putting in uh, your powers correctly. Otherwise, you'll get a bad answer. You are never going to get an answer that big or that small, negative 45 or positive 45 on your exponent. The other thing is, is that they all basically set up the same way. I could give you, um, I think, six or nine different combinations of problems here, but they all work the same way. Something to the mole and then mole to something else. And so as long as you go to the mole in the middle step, then you are doing it correctly. Um, so just convert to the mole. And again, it's always going to be one mole, one mole, one mole, because our conversions are one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23. One mole is equal to the molar mass. And one mole is equal to 22.4 liters. So we can go through the mole to anything else that's here. Okay, And so that's the important thing that you remember here, uh, is that we go through the mole. But it's not only just go through the mole, it's through one mole. The one mole is the universal tie that binds these things together. Okay? All right, that's it for today. See you tomorrow.